Hello guys and welcome back to another body language analysis video. In this video we're going to be breaking down the body language with a very specific idea, okay? We're going to be looking at controlling your emotions, something that I think Tommy Shelby is the best at doing and I think this clip shows it perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the second half of the clip first and play it in reverse and I'm going to jump forward to the start of this clip so that you can see the difference. I think if I played it the other way around it wouldn't have the same impact. So just watch how angry Tommy gets here and then we'll watch the second part and I'll explain. Okay, so he's clearly distressed, all right? And if you were to see that first and then see how he be behaved in this scenario here, you'd be absolutely shocked at the difference because we just saw a man just lose his cool completely. Now watch the difference over these next couple of scenes, okay? Firstly, straight away we can see here, look at the way he sat. His elbows out, relaxed, Conor McGregor-esque. This is how Conor McGregor sits with his palms flat on his thighs. He sat back in the chair, okay, which shows that he's relaxed. What I mean by that is he could easily sit with his butt around about here on the edge of the chair, kind of panicking, worrying about what's coming next, but he's not. He sat back, which means he's relaxed. His back is against the backrest. That's it. I know he's just sitting in a chair, but that's a perfect way to do it if you want to see him relaxed. His feet are wide apart. We can see that here. We can see the angle too. We can see the distance between the knees. So we can straight away see that he's very relaxed. As is this guy over here, except his hands are absolutely actually clasped in the middle and his thumbs are actually twiddling. But he does have his feet the same width apart. He looks just as relaxed as Tommy, except for this part here. And it will be interesting to see how this unfolds as we move forward. Thomas Shelby. Okay, so straight off the bat, we have two little pieces here. If we have a look at the woman, she's clearly angry, okay? Look at the distress on her face. You can just tell that she's angry. It might be natural, I'm not sure, but you can kind of see that her nose is kind of scrunched up. You can see that she's got a look of disgust on her face, and most importantly, her arms are folded here, which means that, you know, she's she's clearly displaying her anger and her distaste towards this guy, and it's a form of closed body language, so she's not open to the idea of sitting across from him. She probably is slightly intimidated due to his reputation, but if we play this on... Look at the difference with Tommy. Like I said earlier, the Conor McGregor type arms, very wide, very dominant, without being intimidating, okay? Because when you're in these kind of scenarios, I'll teach you this in the army, you don't exactly want to come across as intimidating or push somebody to the edge, you know, your life's at stake. But he's sitting there very dominantly, we, can see, we can't see his legs here, which shows that they must be wide apart. And he sat back. We can see that it's arched backwards here. You can see that his posture is leaning back. He's very, very relaxed. You blew up my pub. Anger defeats fear. Good. You blew up my pub. Okay, so that's very passive aggressive. You blew up my pub. He's not exactly screaming in, in her face. He's not letting her know that it affected him. He's just saying it's something that you shouldn't have done. And the entire time he's doing it, he's holding strong eye contact. And I just want to cast you back to the first scene I showed you and how angry he was. Look at the difference, guys. 
And that's a lesson for every man out there. It's m- massively important to always keep your cool in every scenario. Whether it's a street fight about to happen, whether it's a girlfriend who's a little bit toxic, who's really trying to play on your nerves and set you up to get angry, or whether you're in the workplace and you need to stay calm. In all scenarios, the guy who keeps his calm the longest usually wins. Tommy has a reputation to uphold. A reputation for not being scared of anything. In all the world. Look at that posture, guys. That's fantastic. Look at the extra width. I know it's the jacket, but the strong shoulders. He's cast he's not he's not a big man. We all know this. He's around about five foot eight, five foot nine, but he's casting a very big figure here. And he's holding that strong eye contact. So it's somewhat it's 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 very dominant and it's somewhat, like I said, passive aggressive, but he's kept his cool the entire time. I think it's fantastic. The blend and I don't think there's anybody... I know it's just uh, a series, guys. I always mention this, you know, but they're portraying things that are accurate to real life. And I think Tommy is the best in the world at this. Violent men are the easiest to deal with. The other thing he's doing, too, as a little trick, is the slow blinks. The slow blinks are very good. Obviously not too slow where people think you're drunk. Sorry. Where people think you're drunk. But the way that he's doing it slower prevents him looking nervous it prevents him looking angry if you if you ever it's hard to take notice of this but watch people when they're angry watch people when they're nervous they blink multiple multiple times and they blink a little bit harder than than normal tommy looks as though he could be sat at home in an armchair with a red wine so tell me which brand of rebel are you eh? and there the way he moves on the conversation that's very very good I read somewhere that you Paddy started fighting amongst yourselves now. The king offers you a peace treaty, and you start a war about it. The other thing that's uh, key to take note of here is his tone. His tone is very, it's, it's somewhat monotone, as in it's very relaxed. And then he uses the whisper for emphasis. Now he could go the other way and start shouting and screaming and getting louder, but that would show that he's losing his cool. So he's having the monotone down to the whisper. And he's definitely winning this battle. You know, you can see here, the way he's tilted his head means that he's interested in the conversation. His body language seems to actually be aiming this way. I know it's because he's looking at Tommy. His eyes are fixed on Tommy. He's got his attention. And she is still, she's still pretty nervous. She's apprehensive. You can see she's got the arms folded. It's just not a good look for these two. They do look scared. They look, well, they look on edge. That's what I'd say. They look on edge and Tommy just looks composed. That's funny. Don't you think? A war about peace. And just to explain the whisper, guys, because I, I always just presume everybody watching these videos has watched all my other ones, but it's not true. It's because I make all my videos for the subscribers rather than trying to get new, new ones in. The whisper is a weapon that you can use in your favor because... Whenever you whisper, people will pay more attention to you. The extra emphasis will make people lean in and listen that little bit more attentively to what you're saying. That's why it's so effective in things like sales, negotiations, when you're you're talking to women especially. So are you for the treaty or against the treaty? Forgive me, I get confused. You were one decision away from death, Mr. Shelby. So stop fucking smiling. The fact that he keeps smiling here, I think, is fantastic. The way he's just kept his cool under pressure. Now, that can mean keeping your cool when you're angry, but it can also mean keeping your cool when, you know, you're in a dangerous scenario. Because there's no point getting crazy. There's no point worrying about what's coming next if it hasn't happened yet. It's just not going to benefit you. I mean, worst case scenario, and I know nobody's going to be in this scenario, hopefully anyway, it's going to be more about business negotiations or other things like that. But there's no point panicking. You know, worst case scenario here, he gets shot in the head. There's not a lot he could have done about it by panicking. You might as well stay calm because the same outcome is going to happen. So you might as well stay calm because you can think straighter. And Tommy might be absolutely shitting himself here, but he keeps holding the eye contact. He doesn't flinch when that gun gets put to his head. 
And yes, this is an extreme version of this scenario or the, how you can use this trait. But there'll be many scenarios in, in real life around women, around other men that are trying to intimidate you, around business scenarios where keeping your cool is paramount to you winning the, the negotiation as such because everything is a negotiation. Your name is Irene O'Donnell. And the way he's changed the subject too, as in I don't care about the gun, I don't care about what's going on to the right of me, I'm going to be focused on what I've got going on, because he believes he can outsmart them, and usually being smarter and better prepared is a great way to control your emotions, because you know you're not cornered. You have a son at the Sherrywood Road School in Harborn. he has arms on his legs, his name is Sean, he comes last in every race. Poor boy. Poor boy. You just see her face there. She blinked once. It was very quick. I was wondering if she was going to do it again. But watch this. You can see the difference. Arms on his legs. There. You see how quick that was compared to Tommy? That's a huge, huge difference. And it shows that she is nervous because obviously he's talking about her son. And she's got the wide eyes and the high eyebrows. Okay. What she's doing here is visually showing that she's in fear. Okay. She's showing that she's shocked by what he's saying. And she, she looks fearful. Now you've got the nostrils that are flared, okay, it could be her natural nose, but they look slightly flared to me. The mouth is open, which shows fear again. And she is just a picture of anxiety there. His name is Sean. He comes last in every race. To give you an example of that, guys, when you, how you can use this in real life, for example, staying cool and not showing your emotions. Okay, you walk around a corner, you're on your phone, you're not really worried about anything, you're kind of in your zone, and as you come around the corner, there's a beautiful woman, the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, you kind of open your eyes very wide, your eyebrows shoot up, your mouth falls open, although this sounds a little bit cartoony, it happens, okay, next time it happens to you, take note of it, you can be aware while it happens, you can see other guys do it, maybe your friends, people will say, oh, that doesn't happen to me, it really does, it might not be jaw dropping to the floor like in the films, because obviously it's a hyperbole, it's a cartoon, but your eyes will widen, your eyebrows will lift, your nostrils may flare, and your mouth will open slightly, and it's kind of a look of awe, and as soon as a woman sees you do this, she has the power exchange in her favor, and this is something that you need to stop. This is another form of not controlling your emotions, okay? If you can stay cool in those scenarios, exhibit a Tommy, and not something like this. This is, Imagine this being a man looking at a woman. This is how a lot of guys would potentially look. But instead of looking fearful, it would be a bit more lustful. If you can stay like Tommy and be unreactive and aloof, it's a giant weapon. Poor boy. Poor boy if the race was important. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so he's being threatening here with the words that he's saying. But his body language isn't matching that. Which isn't necessarily congruency because based on the words that he's saying but it's kind of a threat without losing control and it's fantastic it's a way to it's a way to display your intentions without being too aggressive and shouting and screaming i like the way he's done this irene o'donnell and then the use of her name as well okay irene o'donnell by using somebody's name you make it personal you know it really hits home and i think that's what he's doing there there are other ways of carrying out this mission. And we see there the gun went to his head. He didn't even flinch, okay? He went back left, but that's because the gun pushed him that way. But he hasn't flinched. Please allow me to put a bullet in this scum tinker's head. And you can see how aggressive this guy was. Okay, he was wildly aggressive there. Whereas look at the difference between Tommy. Tommy hasn't moved. Mouth's still closed. Eyes are still slightly droopy. He looks just like he's very relaxed. Compared to this guy who just showed massive levels of aggression as we can see here look at the difference i think there's a better tinker. there okay clenched jaw clenched teeth you know he lo almost looks fierce whereas tommy hasn't flinched his head they're exactly the same not even a nostril flare and she's got the, i know she's acting of course guys but she's got the deep breathing there which is usually a good sign that somebody's under pressure no he researches his enemies 
That's why he's been chosen. I am chosen. And then addressing a scenario like this with humour, that's always a good weapon. I'm chosen. Sorry, let me take that back. I think that's skipped, guys. I'm chosen. So he does the same again. Addresses it with humour, but he holds the eye contact this time. So the guy who's actually got a gun to his head. Which is very brave, but it's also, you know, again, controlling your emotions. I'm chosen. Could the chosen one smoke? And again, addressing the scenario with humour. And just cast your minds back, guys, to the first scene. This is why it's so important for me to do this in this order. He was so angry when he came out, okay? They, they clearly got to him. But the way that he's making a joke out of it, acting like he isn't phased, they've got a gun to his head. We know from the other scene that I've shown you already, he was clearly distressed. But he's not showing that. And you w See, these guys don't know. This is almost a look of confusion. He's like, how is this man so cool? Well, he's not. He's just not letting you see it. And you need to do that with women. You need to do that with other men. But especially, you know, business scenarios, but especially with women. Like if you've, let's say, broken up with your ex, you cannot show that you're distressed, worried, anxious. You know, so many guys are like, I want you back. Don't do any of these things. Do that in your own private time if you want to. Go up to the top of a fucking hill or mountain and scream. Don't ever let other people see you in that in that state. And that's exactly what Tommy's done here. He's cracking jokes. He's taking the piss out of these people. Whereas we've seen behind the scenes at the start, he's actually visibly distressed. He's, he's really anxious about these people. He's worried, but he's not letting them see it. A vacancy has appeared, and you're going to fill it. The other thing he's doing here in a body language sense is he's spreading his items around the table. Now if you ever sat down, let's say at a dinner table, got your phone out, your wallet out, your keys, and like don't spread them out like a weirdo, but if you just place them in, I, I guess, just around the table, different spots, or if you ever see somebody at a workplace and they've got a newspaper and they spread that out across the table, they spread things everywhere, it shows that they're dominant, it's a more dominant behavior, and it comes from the ape world where the more space that you take up, which which is resemblant to you, but also the things that you possess, okay? So the things that you either own or the things that you're touching or you're move, moving things around, it's a display of dominant behavior. And by him doing that and spreading them around the table shows that he's in complete control. Tells him I am. By an informed consensus. I have things to do. So perhaps you could tell the chosen one what he has been chosen for. The way he brought that down at the end, okay? This is a tonality thing that you can do. Ask the chosen one what he's been chosen for. The way he brings it down at the end. It's very it's very composed. It's it's an assertive tone rather than coming up at the end. And I know I've done this before with you guys, but it's so important to to emphasize and show men should always end their sentences on a low unless it maybe it's scenario based maybe it's for comedic purposes but in the majority of, of circumstances bringing your sentences down at the end is so much better than bringing them up like a question like you don't know what's happening that's very submissive doing it the other way around is what tommy is superb at and the the birmingham the birmingham accent really compliments this from now on mr shelby you shut your fucking gypsy mouth and listen to your instructions okay so she's really insulted him there gypsy mouth and she put a swear word before it which adds some emphasis that's what swear words are for adding emphasis to things and it's almost it's almost a lot sharper you know when you say shut your fucking and then something afterwards rather than just using the term itself it's a lot harsher on the ear it punches home it's a lot more aggressive that's why the emphasis is there but watch how tommy reacts nothing he still has the sh he, his face hasn't moved okay he just holds strong eye contact and he's still got the slow blinks here 
which is again fantastic. Now we know, like I've said from the first scene, he was distressed. This is probably what pissed him off the most. He wanted to say something. He wanted to react. Don't do it. If you don't react, but you also don't shy away, so he's not exactly looking at the floor, ignoring her, he's not exactly scared, he's looking at her right in the eye. His face hasn't moved, his head hasn't moved, his body hasn't moved, he's not flinching, he's not showing that he's nervous from these people, he's still holding that eye contact, as I said, but he's not letting them know that they're getting to him, which is a giant weapon, because it fucks with people's heads, and that's what Tommy is a master at. And um, that'll be the end, guys, because it's going to jump into the scene that we watched at the start. Maybe it'd be good to watch it again for emphasis, but I guess you guys could just rewind and watch it again. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.